And greetings, greetings from Con, we're ready to start. <coughs> greetings and welcome to Condit Presbyterian Church. I'm Mary M. Westbrook and I'm glad to worship with everyone here in person and all of you online. Please take a moment to register your attendance in the red pew pads. If you are worshiping online, you may register your attendance by emailing pastor at conditchurch.org. If you have prayer requests, please write them on the yellow prayer card found in your pew. <clears throat> the ushers will collect them during the offering. If you are worshiping online, you may send your prayer requests to pastor at conditchurch.org. Happy Mother's Day. And um, we have um, some floral gifts uh, for mothers. Um, we're giving a special gift to the oldest mother and the youngest mother and the mother with the most children. And that'll be after you can meet out in the North X to pick up your gift. And we have a little gift for all the mothers. Um, all the churches in our presbytery are being encouraged to join the We Are Easter People Challenge. The goal of the challenge is for Scioto Valley congregations to jointly log 2,022 hours of Matthew 25-related mission service during the seven-week period between Easter and Pentecost. Our efforts and those of our fellow 
Scioto Valley Presbyterians will be recorded and celebrated throughout the challenge. There will be several ways for you to participate, contribute to our food drive, join our mission project on May 20th, or do acts of service on your own. The only requirement is that the hours of service be undertaken by a congregation and directed to our brothers and sisters, Christ called the least of these, those who hunger, those who thirst, those who are sick, those who are strangers, those who are imprisoned, those who are naked. If you do acts of service on your own, please contact me with the type of work and number of hours worked so it can be added to our congregation's total. Um, to date, we have 18 hours logged in by Linda O'Quinn. She did a um, sewing project for nursing home residents. And she will be doing um, a, her ministry to, for premature babies. So she does some sewing projects for them. That'll be later this month. So we'll have those hours too. Condit has scheduled an opportunity to serve. <clears throat> we will be distributing food um, for the Lutheran Social Services at Glenwood Community Center in Columbus on May 20th from 1130 to 230 and we are looking for four to five people that would like to help. Um, we have three people currently signed up for that. Um, call me to get signed up. Um, Big Walnut's Friends Who Share Annual Food Drive has a new list of items they would like content to donate. They are listed in the bulletin under Mark Your Calendar. Please bring the items to church on the Sunday listed and put them in the boxes in the Northex. Uh, Kathy will be sure the food is delivered to Big Walnut's friends who share. Um, they are also looking for volunteers. Um, the dates, the days of the week are Monday Wednesday, or Wednesday, 9 to 11, second or third Tuesday, 6.30 to 8. And it sounds like they will take any help. They, you know, you'll just do what needs to be done when you go there. Um, and that counts towards the Easter People Challenge. Um, also working on another ministry um, opportunity. Um, don't know the actual job yet, but it'll probably be on Tuesday or Thursday afternoon um, in Delaware. Um, our blood drive <clears throat> made goal. Condit collected four, 24 pints at the April blood drive. The donors were on time and the staff was well organized, which makes for a good day. 72 lives will be saved. They also tell you, send you an email and tell you specifically where your blood is being used, which is kind of a neat thing. Um, the next blood drive at Condit will be from 1 to 6 on Friday, June 10th. Please join us for lunch to celebrate Pam Gillette's completion of her internship at Condit on May 22nd after the worship service. Lunch will be provided in the fellowship hall after the service, and a gift will be presented to Pam to thank her for her time with us and to bless her in her future ministry. You may contribute to the gift by putting um, the donation in the, in the offering plate and just designating it on the check or on the envelope. So I think that is it for the announcement. Um, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
That was beautiful, wasn't it? You don't know, but that's a special song to me. When I was um, probably in junior high, my choir director at my church got a couple of us and started giving us voice lessons, and that was the first solo I ever sang in church <laughs> as a young person. And I don't think I've heard it in a long time. That was beautiful. Thank you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now, the last Sunday I was here was Easter Sunday, and today we continue to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and hear about the miraculous raising of Tabitha in the book of Acts. Let us celebrate our risen Lord together. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessing and honor is yours, O God. Glory to God forever. Alleluia. And if you'd like to, you may stand. We're going to be singing, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
God is present to guide our journey and eager to forgive us when we go astray. Therefore, in humility and faith, let us confess our sins against God and neighbor. Holy God, we confess that we have strayed paths of right relationship and peace. We have dishonored you, ourselves, and your creation. We repent of these hurtful ways. Three of us, we pray, as we learn to forgive others and guide our feet into the path. Amen. God's mercy overflows as a healing spring to cleanse us of our offenses. Therefore, know that you are forgiven and receive new life. May the peace of Christ be with you.
Thank you so much. That was great. That was great. <clears throat> Shepherd of souls, you call us to an abundant feast at the table of your word. Open our hearts to feed on your goodness, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that we might dwell ever more deeply in you. Amen. The New Testament scripture reading is from Acts chapter 9, 36 through 43. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda, Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there <clears throat> sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hands and helped her up. Then, calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The liturgical season of Easter is full of surprises. The surprises began with the resurrection of Jesus. And then we have stories like Thomas witnessing to the risen Christ. There's a story about Jesus fixing breakfast on the beach. He surprised the disciples with that. And in this passage, we have Peter's astonishing visit to Tabitha. Not only is scripture full of surprises, but we find surprises in our own lives. But well, we, as a church, share a surprise that God has called me to another church, and you begin a time of transition. These last weeks that I'll be with you are certainly going to be bittersweet. I believe God still has important work for us to do in this liminal time. I hope that we will honor God by ending our ministry together well. Today, as I serve you communion for the last time, oh my gosh, I'm probably going to cry for the next month. I'm sorry. <laughs> my heart is full of gratitude for the privilege of being your pastor these last six years. And as I preach my last few sermons here, the message that God is putting on my heart is to bring you both a challenge and assurance. I will challenge us to continue to serve God and to dig deep to see how we each might even step up in our service to God and to each other. I also want to spend time this month reminding you and assuring you that you will be okay. You will even thrive in the coming days. Condit has a rich history, and God's still here. Even as God is preparing me for something new, God is preparing you and your next pastor for something new. And I believe with all my heart that God has good things in store for you. In the passage today, we meet an ordinary woman, an ordinary woman who became a matriarch in her church. Have you had the privilege of knowing women like that? Who are the ones you can name? I bet, especially as you sit in this room, those of you who have been a part of this church for a long time just can think of a lot of matriarchs and patriarchs. And I wonder who you would say are the matriarchs and patriarchs that God is using now at Condit. Because you're here. You may not think of yourselves that way, but you are here I can't wait to see how God will lead you through this next season as a congregation because you are disciples of Christ, just as Tabitha was. It was amazing that scripture 
recognizes her as a disciple. That's not a word usually used for women. So I think she must have really been a respected person that they wanted to make sure people understood. She was a disciple of Christ. And we get from what the scripture says about her that she dedicated herself to helping the less fortunate. She made sacrifices for others. And when it talks about her sewing garments for other people, I think about she probably provided for people who didn't have enough, but I think she probably also just made some beautiful things for people that maybe already had a garment or two and blessed people with something of beauty. So not just taking care of the basic need, but I would imagine because of the way she's spoken of in the passage that what she made for people was beautiful and blessed them in several ways. Now, when this passage begins, the community in Joppa was grieving. Now, Peter was a respected leader, and so when they were grieving, they lost this lovely disciple, Tabitha. They wanted Peter with him, with them because they respected him. Um, he brought some peace and comfort to them when he was around. And so when they went through something troubling, the first thing they thought of when they heard he was nearby is, oh, let's have Peter come. He helps us get through things like this. So they wanted him with him, but it doesn't say that they asked him to raise her from the dead. I don't think that was anything they had in mind. I think they wanted Peter there to help them in their grief and to comfort them. And so, of course, God's going to do something surprising here because it's not what anyone was expecting. Now, Dorcas had cared for people in a very personal way. And I think that what's going to happen here is going to also be a very personal thing. It's going to affect every single person because she had done something for so many of them. And so Peter sent them all out of the room, which is something Jesus often did too. A lot of times when Jesus performed miracles, there weren't a lot of people around. Sometimes there were, but sometimes it was just a very small group. So he sent them out of the room and he got down on his knees and prayed. This was a serious time of prayer to get down on his knees and then turning toward her, he said, Tabitha, get up. And of course she opened her eyes and sat up. So, when Peter prayed, he had the confidence then to believe that God was going to do something. And so he spoke to her to get up. That's a lot of confidence in prayer, isn't it? <laughs> to pray that and then say, get up. <laughs> and then everything was changed for them. The community was about to grow. They didn't know that, but the community was about to grow. And it was going to include people that they wouldn't have imagined being a part of them as a church. Just after this was when Gentiles started to become a part of the church. So they had no idea what was just about to explode in their group. William Willimon describes it this way. Here in this new community, no one stays in his or her place. Common fishermen are preaching to temple authorities. Paralyzed old men are up and walking about and changing lives. And a woman called Gazelle heads a welfare program among the poor at Joppa. In her work, Tabitha is busy making a new configuration of power in which God uses what is lowly and despised in the world to bring to naught the things that are. Well, this was such an amazing thing that happened. Um, of course, it became known all over Joppa. And the response of people when they heard the good thing that God had done was to believe in the Lord. Miracles always point to God. They're not to amaze people about the person who performed it. Miracles are done to um, teach us something about God and always to point toward God. And the response to seeing God do more than anyone thought or asked for was belief. I think it still is today. When we tell our stories about the goodness of God, I think it can bring people to belief. I was thinking while the choir was singing, we have a couple ladies right here that I would say have amazing stories. And if you don't know their stories of recovery, 
to me, I look at them singing in that choir and I'm like, that is an amazing act of God because a lot of prayer went into the healing and recovery of these ladies. And that's a story to tell. We should tell these stories when God does something amazing because not only are we blessed by it, but other people love to hear our stories. And when it's your own story, people usually don't question whether it's true or not. If it's your own story and you can tell what happened and say, this is what happened with my friend when we prayed. So keep telling those stories because you guys have some good ones. Well, the church today is called to serve and rise up. We are called to bring hope to others. And then the passage ends. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. It's a really weird ending to this passage. And um, so let's think about it. Funny ending, but it was in his time with Simon that Peter began his ministry to the Gentiles. So that one little sentence that he stayed for some time actually has a lot of significance. A lot happened, and that's when um, the church really did explode as Gentiles were being included and brought into the fold. So immediately after bringing hope to the Christian community in Joppa, Peter begins ministry to everyone, even outside of the Jewish community. So let me ask you, where do you see yourself in the story today? I mean, it's a great story, but let's try to bring it in. Do you see yourself as Dorcas or Tabitha, called to serve others? And so many of you serve in so many ways. You're already doing it. But is there something where you can dig deeper and um, be inspired by this story? Maybe, as you remember, matriarchs and patriarchs of the past, and you guys talk about them, because, I mean, I hear stories about them, and I know last summer I had the privilege of doing a funeral for someone in the Brenner family, and it was so neat to meet that family, because I'd been hearing your stories about them for years, and it was just an honor to meet them and to know, you know, this family is so loved. So I know you have those matriarchs and patriarchs in your minds, but who are the matriarchs and patriarchs now? And maybe it's you. And maybe you don't think of yourself that way. But it's, it's your time. You are it. And so let's pray about stepping it up. How do I be that person? Who do I admire? And um, what inspiration do I get from them that I can use then to um, minister well, maybe today you relate more to Tabitha. You feel dead and needing to rise up. I think some of us probably feel that way. There's a little death going on, and we need to rise up. And so I hope that you can also be inspired by the story. It's including, included in our um, church year in the season of Easter, and it's a time when we should be thinking resurrection, new life, God doing new things. So if you come feeling more that way. I hope that today you will find some new life. Or maybe you feel like the bystanders. You're grieving. There's some stuff going on in your life. You need some hope. And you're looking for some inspiration. And if that's where you are today, that's an okay place to be. And I hope that God meets you there today in an amazing way. Well, friends, no matter what life deals us, God gives us the power to rise again. And God gives us the power to help others rise again. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for this beautiful scripture that can inspire us. And I thank you for our own stories of hope and healing and answered prayer. I thank you for the rich history of this congregation and for those who are becoming the next generation of matriarchs and patriarchs. And I pray that you... Give them every gift they need to do that. I pray that you give them inspiration and that their love for you and for one another and for their community will continue to grow. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now if you'd like to stand, we'll be singing 526, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ.
is offering time. Do we have any ushers? All right, you can hand your, there's a little card. If you have a prayer request, just put this in the plate. Um, all right. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Trusting in divine care, let us present our tithes and offerings to God who restores our lives eternally. Holy God, you anoint us with the oil of gladness. Your love overflows our hearts. Accept our offerings for the good of the world as we joyfully give thanks for our life in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join us in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, buried, he descended into hell, the third day he rose again, dead. he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quicken the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from the east and the west and from the north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites anyone who trusts him to share the feast which he has prepared. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. In your wisdom you made all things and sustained them by your power. You formed us in your image, setting us in this world to love and to serve you and to live in peace with your whole creation. When we rebelled against you, refusing to trust and obey you, you did not reject us but still claimed us as your own. You sent prophets to call us back to your way. Then, in the fullness of time, 
Out of your great love for the world, you sent your only Son to be one of us, to redeem us and heal our brokenness. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night before he died, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the covenant for forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion and body and blood of Christ, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. the body of Christ broken for you.
the blood of Christ shed for you. We thank you, O God, that through word and sacrament you have given us your Son, who is the true bread from heaven and food of eternal life. So strengthen us in your service that our daily living may show our thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In Scripture it says that if any of you are suffering, to call on the elders of the church to pray and anoint you for healing. And so today I offer prayer and anointing for healing if anyone desires healing in your body, your soul, your emotions, your spirit. Is there anyone today who would ask for anointing? And the prayer response today is, O risen Christ, and your, your response is, open our eyes to your mercy in the world. In this season of rejoicing, let us offer our prayers and thanksgiving. Open our eyes to your mercy in the world, for the goodness of the earth, that it may flourish with flowing waters, verdant pastures, and paths that lead us to protect and care for your creation. O risen Christ, open our eyes to your mercy in the world for the peace and welfare of the world, that all our tables of work and worship promote the understanding and dignity that transforms enemies into friends. O risen Christ, open our eyes to your mercy in the world. For all who suffer with sickness, need, or danger, that all our afflictions and fears are met with healing and the comforting present of your voice. O risen Christ, open our eyes to your mercy in the world for the blessings we receive and share, that we may live a life of ceaseless praise for the salvation that is ours through you. O risen Christ, open our eyes to your mercy in the world. For the saints in light, that you will wipe every tear from their eyes as they dwell with you eternally. O risen Christ, open our eyes to your mercy in the world. Holy God, you are our hope and our strength, our light and our so sovereign our shepherd and our savior, with all the saints in heaven and on earth, we praise your holy name and entrust every care to you. Through Jesus Christ, we pray the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Bless this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And if you'd like to stand, we will be singing 539 as our closing hymn, We Will Go Out With Joy.
and now receive this blessing. Go forth to follow paths of righteousness. Go forth to follow paths of peace. And may God's goodness and mercy follow you as you serve the risen Lord. May Christ, the good shepherd, bless and guide you this day and always. Alleluia. Go in peace. Amen. I love you.